we got the Vo switch switch module and here's the stuff it comes with oh you'll have to oh that might be inappropriate oh hell anyways comes with uh your digital panel one of these ram mount looking things another one a connector or uh i forget what they call this and then i had this one sitting around so i'm just going to use that and this i'm going to put onto these two things here that way i don't have to use this ugly uh whatever the hell it's called a bunch of zip ties wire connectors screws etc uh this big monster looks like a i don't know two inch connector with a one inch uh ram mount ball i guess you could use this on a uh if you had a one of those uh front roll bars that go across the windshield and of course the vo switch eight switch control module keeps a tad dusty guess i'll be working on this fuse box right here got my uh my prop here to help keep the hood open so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the thing take this out take this out and prop that bow switch control module in place never fails i tell you man when you need something can't find it and when you don't need it it's there all okay so according to these directions this is what you're gonna need a ratchet a 7 mil 10 mil Phillips screwdriver and that should be it maybe one of these too all right so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen those 10 millimeter bolts right here and right here bolts are out get all this bs in sorry i'm not a professional youtuber we're ready to rock and roll put these back in all that's left is to run these wires all right so i just want to go over quickly what's in this bag seven eight zip ties a fuse tap Basically what, what this is used for, if you wanted to run to your accessory uh, fuse, you tap this into here, and obviously you tap it into, uh, I forget, it, it's in the directions, exactly what, which fuse to tap, and that, that way, if you accidentally leave your uh, light on or something, as soon as you get out of your Jeep, turn your key off, it turns it off. You got screws, your terminal so you can crimp on. That's this. Oh, pictures. I like pictures. These aren't the pictures I like, though. You got your Viola. Okay, so I've got all the cables straightened out, dekinked as best as I could dekink them. I just throw them across. I'm better later. And then this power dealio. So I'm gonna just run it through there and go in cab. I haven't hooked up any, anything to the battery yet. So I'm just following the instructions just as a precaution. I know I've seen it done a couple hundred times on video. So anyway, let's do that. And just to the top right there is one way I could go in. It's a, I'm not sure if you can see that exactly to the three o'clock of that booster is another one, which I've already poked through. So I'll be using that Okay, so I managed to cut out this piece of uh, coat hanger wire. I'm just going to use this because I can't get my hand in there. So once I can just push through, I'll go inside and pull it, pull the cable through. So it's through. Now I'll go inside and pull it. All right, going inside. I'm not sure it's a little dusty in here, but I do use my Jeep, so don't hold that against me. You can see that light right there. That's where the uh, coat hanger is at. So I'm just going to pull it through. There's no room, so I can't show you actually doing it. 
Okay, so pulled it through. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take that, pop this panel off, run it up this way. All right, just quick little view of my, uh, I guess my dashboard. Some people trip out when they see this. So anyhow, this is my setup. Got a vector rod or vector off-road bar. Got an iPad mounted there with uh, RAM mounts. Got my uh, handheld here. Got my Garmin in reach. And I've got this bar up here holding the ham radio. It's 2900 Yesu. And then a cheap little Midland CB radio held on to the uh, footman loop there. All right, now on to popping this little panel off. Easy peasy. And of course, the inevitable trip to the hardware store. <sighs> All right, just quick update. Went to uh, the local Ace. Bought some of this because I can't decide where I want it, where I want the uh, control panel. So I decided for now, I'll be uh, using double-sided tape, that Gorilla stuff I just showed. showed and I'm gonna zip tie the, uh, the base to this bar here. I think this is probably where it's gonna be at eventually. Hold on. That's a little better. So, yeah. So just gonna clean this off real good. This is what I'll be using to uh, mount that too. Okay, there she is. Nice and taped with that Gorilla tape. It's supposed to hold uh, 30 pounds, I think. So we'll see how that does. It's gonna go right there like that. Right there like that. So there it is mounted. Now to run the wire. So I'll be routing this uh, signal cable up through here. I took my freedom panel off. Makes it easier to work. And I'll be running it. It's going to be right here. I forgot I'm not doing it to the center. I'll be doing it to there. Which will be right here. So right at the corner. All right. Not sure if you can see, but what I did here is I ran the cable. I did not remove anything. I didn't want to really get into removing this giant piece because I'd have to take the glove or uh, the visors down. That's what holds this in as well as one small screw. What I did do is I did take that screw out to loosen things. And what I did was I pried this cable underneath. You can see that I would have to take this whole visor off to hold that, take the whole piece off. So for now I can get away with doing that. I'm just tucking it in. Okay, so real quick note. Because of the position of where I mounted it, I didn't have to go through great lengths to tuck that cable in, okay? Like I said, I removed the one screw that was in there, which was the Phillips head, and then using a little pry tool. That's my pry tool. Anyways, using the pry tool, I just got in there and tucked it in nice. It's not even, look, look at all that. I can still move it. Nice and loose. It's not binding anywhere or anything. So I just saved myself a big ass headache. Look at all this. This will definitely reach even your back sports bar where your speakers are at. I'm gonna tuck it away in here, keep it out of the elements and the heat, etc. So now I just have this one little Phillips that goes right in there. There you can see the zip tie I've got. In case uh, this uh, 30 pound tape decides to let go, this will hold it in place, as well as help tuck the cable up close to the uh, thing there. The, uh, as you can see, I'm zip tying everything together, kind of keep it neat, keep it from moving. I zip tied this entire branch 
to this entire branch, which is gonna take it all the way to the battery. Okay, now I'm over here on the uh, driver's side where the fuse box is at, the battery's at. Um, I'm gonna try to tuck that underneath this big fat black encasement. Okay, so I decided that I would just keep the wires running on top versus below that because below that would trap all the heat. I figured they would cool off. All right, so I'm getting ready to install this uh, fuse tap. And it says to find the M6, which is this 20 right here. So we're just gonna pop it out. So up until this point, I have not messed with any power. All I did was pull that fuse out. Now I am going to disconnect that negative as is recommended in the manual. And then I'm gonna to try to straighten out some of this crap. So the negative is off. Just gotta make sure you put it somewhere where it's not gonna spark. Cause you still got power going to it. So let's do that. So I see something interesting. When you put the fuse tap in and you close the box, Look what it does to the uh, cable. It smashes it with this part right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a divot in the plastic right underneath. I don't know if you see that. Right there. So I'm gonna cut a divot, that way it's inside. Note to self, do not use tin snips to cut plastic. It just broke off. But it's going to make a nice little divot there. You see that? So I'm just taking the sharp edges off of it. Also just put a little um, vinyl electrical tape just to be on the safe side. So in my scenario, I've got a CB a ham radio um, auxiliary light. So I had those hooked up positive to negative. And so what I'm doing now is I've, I'm uh, taking off the positive ends, but I'm leaving the negative ends here as a ground. And I'll just be uh, hooking that up to the control module. And I'm gonna do that a couple times here. All right, guys, <clears throat> I apologize. I didn't realize my camera was not recording. But like I said, I cleaned up the positives. All the positives are run to the box. All the negatives I left on the battery. Let me go and show you what it looks like out there. For now, I'm just gonna stuff some of this extra wire somewhere. But I'm just glad I just tested it out and it seems to be working. So, Man, I can't believe I didn't record that. Okay, well, let me explain maybe. I ran all my, my four accessories, only the positives, because these boxes nowadays only have positives. So just hooked up the one, two, three, four, and uh, that's really it. Leave all the negatives to the battery, or you can ground them somewhere, but that's that would be a whole pile of negatives. So anyhow, hope this helped some. Um, kind of sucks, but oh well, I'm going to post it anyway. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I will answer every question that I get. Thanks a lot. Well, she's all done. Got the inside buttoned up. It's not the best. I was losing some sunlight and I got to go to work in the morning. So I had to do what I could with what I had. I plan on using one of these, uh, tubing anyhow it looks okay and actually at the battery it looks a lot better than it was i'm glad i put it in the corner there i think it looks a lot better there than it would have on the bar yeah she needs a washing if you like this video give it a like and please subscribe